Hello everyone, welcome again. How are you? So, when you start learning WordPress design development, please raise your hand if you start learning past 12 months. So, they are pretty much experienced people here. Between two to five years? No one? Between six to ten years? Oh, pretty much. And from the start, from 20, 2003, how many are there? Yo, so, we are having like 10 to 15 years experience people here. So, that's a great thing. And uh, what type of learner you are? Vid audio, visual learner? You are visual learner? And auditory learner? If you prefer to learn by audio? If you prefer to read or write or depend on documentation? Yes, of course. And hands-on learner, try things and all, yeah, that's good. So, have you ever tried to uh, access content from Learn WordPress? Learn WordPress is like providing materials in form of lesson plans, video tutorial and courses that help everyone, like from beginners to professional advanced learners, that is, all, that is for everyone. So, our next talk is about learning WordPress and our next speaker is Wes Theron. Uh, please join me in welcoming our next speaker whose passion for education and open source advo advocacy is truly inspiring. I can say because I worked with him last from past two years and I can say he is very, very passionate about creating learn word, content for learn WordPress. It is, uh, he is from South Africa and right now living in New Zealand from past five years. He has twin dad and uh, he was a exchange student in America during his high school. Today our speaker is here to shed light on an exciting initiative titled Learning Pathways on LearnWordPress.org as a strong supporter of a open source movement and an instructional designer, they have been instrumental in shaping the future of Learn WordPress. So Learn WordPress is right now working on pathway and they are creating a content in a uh, format that will be useful for everyone. So please give a big round of applause to our next speaker, Wes Theron. Thank you. All right, good morning. It is still good morning. It's before 12, so yeah, as you have heard and seen, my topic for today is um, learning pathways on learnwordpress.org. So yeah, my name is Wes Theron, and as you have heard, I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa, and I've been living in New Zealand or in the APAC region for the past five years. And I have a background in teaching and content development. So after teaching high school for most of my career and doing some textbook writing, I transitioned to instructional design. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the term instructional design, an instructional designer creates educational materials and experiences like online courses, training content, etc. And I'm currently working at Automatic, contributing full-time to the Make WordPress training team and my main work revolves around creating video tutorials, courses, online workshops, and collaborating with other contributors and content creators. So just a bit more about myself. Um, I'm a father of three boys. I am a twin dad, uh, which I'm very proud of. And I've been married to my wife for almost 14 years. I would say I am happiest in nature. I love being in the outdoors, hiking, etc. I also love traveling, and it's so cool to be here in Taiwan. Um, it's my first time in the East, and I enjoy playing pickleball. And I think a lot of people have never heard of pickleball, but um, it's my favorite new sport. And interesting fact, it's the f one of the fastest growing sports in the U.S. Um, I've heard that they are actually turning some tennis courts into pickleball courts in the States. And then 
I would describe myself as a lifelong learner. I want to keep developing. I want to keep growing as a, as a person, as a father, and um, in my career. So yeah, let's move on to my topic, which is learning pathways. And here's what I will be talking about today. The Learn WordPress platform, takeaways from the individual learner survey, learning pathways and skill levels, YouTube playlists, and redesigning learn.wordpress.org. But firstly, I would like us to reflect on the process involved in learning something new. I want you to think back to the day you started using WordPress for the first time. How old were you? Where were you? Which resources did you use to learn? And how long did it take for you to feel, to feel competent? Now, that question can probably be, be applied to so many aspects of your life. Learning to drive, um, learning to do algebra, um, learning a new language, learning to play an instrument, etc. Um, I always think back to when I started learning to drive. In South Africa, we, we mostly drive with a stick shift. And um, figuring out clutch control was a, was a process. But what I'm trying to say is we all need to start somewhere on a learning journey. And I don't know if you've thought about this, but thousands of people will be new to WordPress in the upcoming months and, and years. And that is where the training team steps in. Now, as you know, Make WordPress is a collab collaborative pro project where global contributors work on developing and improving um, WordPress, covering aspects like core software, themes, plugins, documentation, and of course, training. And all the resources and materials created by the training team can be found on learnwordpress.org. So Learn WordPress is an educational website and initiative that was launched on the 15th of December 2020 with a mission to be the definite space for WordPressers worldwide um, yeah, to learn and to teach about WordPress. And the timing of the the timing of the launch was crucial, as it coincided with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, which forced us to find alternative ways to learn and connect when in-person meetups and word camps came to a stand standstill. So I would kind of describe Learn WordPress as like a one-stop shop to, to learn about WordPress. Now, at this stage, Learn WordPress hosts four main content types, tutorials, lesson plans, courses and online workshops and I thought I'll just quickly touch on these briefly so first up tutorials tutorials are short standalone videos that provide step-by-step -step guidance on specific WordPress features or topics lesson plans on the other hand are teaching guides for educators allowing them to present WordPress related topics effectively and then courses I think that's something we're all very familiar with they are self-guided lessons that enable learners to delve deeper into WordPress topics. And then lastly, online workshops are learning, live learning sessions, kind of similar to, to webinars and can be joined from anywhere in the world. And these sessions are recorded for folks who can't make the live event and they're also available on WordPress.tv and, and YouTube. So that's kind of allowed me to also connect with a lot of people um, around the world. They are more informal, um, sessions where people can ask questions, um, where we try and do demos, and we also try to um, teach people practically. Now, the training team is very proud of the helpful content published on the Learn site, uh, on the Learn site, but recognizes the need for improvement to help prospective students or contributors. And we recognize this um, need for improvement through the feedback. Um, from an individual learner's survey we conducted in 2023, which kind of led to the birth of the Learning Pathways project. Now, before I delve deeper um, into the Learning Pathway project, um, let me share with you some of the key takeaways from the individual learner's survey. So, tutorials, courses, and online workshops are our most used content types. Um, secondly, web-based learning is the most popular learning method. Um, number three, respondents noted that the current content available on, on Learn covers a wide range of topics and can be overwhelming or confusing at times. 
And then lastly, suggestions for improvement included a structured way to consume learning content. And of course, you can read more about the analysis and the results um, on the, ab about the individual learner survey um, on the training team blog. Now, as mentioned, the needs analysis led to the Learning Pathways project. And the goal of the project is to create learning pathways for a diverse audience. So, for someone, so from someone new to WordPress and eager to create their, their first website, um, to, for example, a developer who wants to move from intermediate to advanced. Now, let's define what is a learning pathway. I kind of spoke about instructional design in the beginning as well, but uh, a learning pathway is maybe also something you're not familiar with. So, a learning pathway is a route taken by a learner through a range of activities which allows them to build knowledge progressively. Or to put it differently, um, a learning path is a selection of modules or lessons linked in a structured way for students to progress a master, uh, and master a particular topic. Now, I thought it would be, be helpful um, to view the current content on learnwordpress.org to kind of see what it's like for a new learner who visits the site for the, um, for the first time. Now, you have maybe never been on the site, so let's kind of see what it's like for somebody who, who lands on the landing page and who needs to find their way. Okay, so if you visit on the landing page, you will see tutorials on the left and lesson plans on the right. And then you will find available courses. And below that, you will see a list of the latest tutorials that have been published. And then right at the bottom, you can see upcoming um, or recorded online workshops. So that's the... Um, the landing page. Now let's say for example I am new to WordPress, I'm, I'm on, the, on the landing page and my initial response would probably to be to click on tutorials. And when you land on the tutorials page we will notice the most recent or latest tutorials appear first and then there's some filtering options. Now let's select the getting started filter. Now, you would expect a specific point of departure, right? But once again, you will see the latest posts from that category. And a newbie might be asking, which video do I watch first? Seeing a variety of video tutorials in no specific order might be intimidating or confusing for someone who is unsure what they are looking for and where they need to start. And then the last one, when we make our way to courses, we will find lots of helpful um, content structured in a, in a practical way. Now, if you click on um, introduction to WordPress, we actually have three courses within that category. So I think you'll agree with me, courses allow for a structured way of consuming content. And this is kind of the direction we want to take um, with learning pathways. As you can see, our GitHub project board is full and we have kicked off um, our venture and there's lots of good work in progress. So, let me give you some context. So, the Learning Pathway project was kicked off um, on the 7th of July of last year, 2023. And as mentioned, the, the project aims to enhance the Learn WordPress experience and also cater for, for different roles and skill levels. Now, our first goal is to create learning content for each pathway and skill level. And content creators are in the process of creating new content. And we've actually started doing this um, in Q4 of last year. So the first thing we did was created a thorough outline for these learning pathways. And then we um, asked for feedback from the community. 
And once we got all the feedback, we started creating the content. And the aim is, of course, to also reuse and update um, a lot of the existing content we already have on the, on the Learn website. So each pathway will have a beginner, intermediate, and advanced section. And the training team will first focus on completing learning pathways for the user and for um, developers. So um, once these pathways have launched, the training team will start exploring more pathways such as a designer or a contributor pathway. I'm also really keen to look at like a build with me series um, in the future. So something else we want to do is we want to simplify things by having one content type. You know, at the start, we kind of looked at all the content types we have at the moment. So instead of having um, content types like tutorials and lesson plans, we will only have one content type, namely lessons. And this will include lessons that currently form part of, of courses. So you might be asking, what will a, a lesson look like? Within a, learning, within a learning pathway. So each lesson will have a video with subtitles um, and a transcript. And after completing a lesson, a student will also be able to complete a short quiz or a practical activity to kind of cement their learning. And as you can see, we are aiming to make our content as accessible as possible and to also cater to different um, learning styles. Now, if a lesson has instructor notes, the plan is to have a designated tab um, to, view, uh, to view more information if you would like to teach on the topic. Now this is something I'm very excited about. The training team also decided to host our video lessons on, on YouTube. Now this is kind of how it works. The lessons are uploaded to WordPress.tv and then it automatically gets transferred to YouTube. And once it's uploaded into YouTube, we embed the YouTube videos um, into our learning pathway lessons in Sensei. Now, I just thought I'll mention that as well. We will be creating our, our learning pathway, our lessons, as well as our courses within Sensei, or using the Sensei plugin. And Sensei is an LMS, or a learning management system. So that's what we use on the, um, on the Learn website. So another step we're implementing is creating playlists for each learning pathway on YouTube and setting the videos to be watched in chronological order. Now, YouTube will allow us to reach a wider audience and also utilize the translation and the analytical features. And don't be concerned. Um, YouTube allows WordPress as a nonprofit organization to host our videos um, without any advertisements ensuring an uninterrupted and seamless, seamless viewing experience for users. So that's kind of the first thing I was worried about when we started talking about WordPress, because we, we don't want ads. Um, so yeah, that's a great thing about being a non-profit organization. Now, I think you will agree with me, um, if I just think about myself, um, if, if you want a training video, or you want a solution for a problem you have on your site, the first thing a lot of people do is they go to a search engine or they go to YouTube. And another thing I've noticed within the WordPress um, space is that a lot of tutorials about WordPress or learning material, it's kind of scattered and it's, it's fragmented. People need to go to different places and even if you, like in a search engine or within YouTube, you search a topic and then there's just a list of things to choose from. So, from my perspective, having our content on YouTube in a structured format is a significant step forward and vital to re um, reaching a diverse audience. So, one thing I've also noticed is that um, now that we've started uploading our content on, on YouTube is that we've got those um, analytical features and we can see more traffic and you know, we were reaching people through the Learn website and WordPress.tv and now we've got YouTube as well and it's been wonderful to see. Like our content is reaching much further and hopefully then also drawing people back to, um, to the Learn site. Now another topic, and this is probably um, at the top of mind for us as well, is language diversity. 
So we have translation contributors actively participating in the training team. And so far, the training team's, um, training team's content creators have predominantly been English-speaking contributors. And this has, of course, resulted in, in many of Learn's content being, being in English. So the great thing is the training team um, has a growing team of translators who translate these resources um, into multiple languages. Um, I was actually on, I was in, the, in, in Slack yesterday and um, I can then kind of see some of the new content that has been published and some new things that are um, being translated on a, weekly, on a weekly basis in different languages. But I don't know if everybody realizes this, but we're always open for non-English speakers to create content in their own languages. Um, so that's something we, we really want to encourage and, and see more of. So that someone can say, you know, I want to create content in Japanese, and then um, we can host them and create the content in Japanese originally, and then we can actually translate that to English or other languages from there. And of course, to address the language gap for non-English speakers, we are leveraging YouTube's um, translation feature. And I actually tested this out um, the other day. Um, so I also speak Afrikaans, and then I, I looked at some of our content, and I you know, changed the, um, the language to Afrikaans, and I was kind of impressed by how, how accurately um, things were translated. So it is a helpful tool. Um, but of course, we also want our transcripts and, and, and so forth to be, to be translated. Now, some of you might have thought, but what about Glotpress? So you, you may know that Glotpress is used to, as a, a management system or a, as a way to translate WordPress, the CMS. Um, but we have experimented with, with Glotpress. Um, and the feedback from Meta has that it's not ideal for, for translating post content. But yeah, having, a, having content reaching different languages is, is a top of mind for us. So one of the, the main goals of the Learning Pathways project is also to redesign the Learn website. So you've seen the old website or the current website, and the plan is to redesign that website with the clear Learning Pathways and also improved content discoverability, new search filters, and also other organization strategies. And the mock-up of the new website has been created. It's actually been created as we speak. Um, the site's design is currently being developed and finalized in Figma. And um, yeah, I'm very excited um, when, it is, yeah, when it's going to be finally done. And um, as you can imagine, to, to get that project over the finish line of redesigning the website, there's been strong collaboration between various MAC training teams, such as the training team, .org design team, the meta team, marketing team, etc., cetera, to, um, to complete this part of the project. Now, you might be asking, when are we going to see the new learning pathways and the new website? So, um, the plan is to actually launch in Q3 of this year. Um, and we're very excited about um, helping folks learn in a more effective and, and structured way. And as I said, we're first going to start with the, the two pathways, the, the user pathway and the developer pathway, and then keep building from that. And I want to take this, this moment as well to just thank all the contributors. And kudos, yeah, kudos to all the contributors who's been involved in making this come to fruition and to, um, yeah, to develop content, um, to help with the... The, the information um, architecture for the new website. Yeah, so many different role players. And of course, we want you. We want contributors uh, from WordCamps everywhere, everywhere in the world to contribute to Learn WordPress. So if you are keen and, um, and interested in, in creating content, um, please reach out to us. But the great thing is you don't only have to be a content creator. You can review content, you can edit content, you can translate content, um, you can run um, online workshops, you can help with administrative work, um, etc. There's, there's many areas to, be, um, to get involved in. So at Contributor Day, for example, I mentioned that um, 
two folks from the Japanese community um, have decided to run online workshops, and that's where that's their way of contributing to to the training to the training team. So yeah, we we eager to see more content creators um, join, but yeah. There are so many um, other areas to get involved with as well. So that is Learning Pathways, and um, that's a wrap. Thank you. Share, share. <laughs>
And your other part of your question? I'm sorry, yeah. And then uh, what are the popular contents, uh, like content formats? Uh, so like, are they, is it videos on YouTube mostly? Yeah, you so, folks? so as, you, as you heard now, we, we've shifted in the past few months. So in the past, until like a few months ago, we only had our content on WordPress.tv, or we upload to WordPress.tv, and then we added the link to, um, to a lesson. So people would, be, would have only been able to access our content through WordPress.tv or if they go to the Learn website and then they can click on a tutorial and they can watch the tutorial. Um, but you're saying what's the, the most popular. Um, yeah, I would say, uh, looking at the, the latest stats as well, it is mostly videos, um, video content. But as I said, we, we have the, the transcript as well for folks who just wants to, to read and, and not, not watch the video. Um, but yeah, the traffic has gone up so much since we've uploaded everything to, to, to YouTube as well. So we're actually getting people that, that's watching our content without, avi, without actually having to go to the Learn website, but it is a, it's a portal in. Yeah. And with the, the playlists that we want to create for a learning pathway, that's a great way for people to, like I say, learn in a structured way. So the next video links to the previous video, etc. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, if you're a content creator, please reach out. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, what kind of length of videos do you have? Do you have shorter videos or longer or what's preferred? Yeah, so um, it, it, to be honest, it varies. Some videos are three minutes, some videos are five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, 12 minutes. But I would say it averages around five to six, seven minutes. So of course the aim is probably always to go shorter, um, but depending on the topic. Um, but yeah, I would say five minutes is, a, is, a, is usually a goal. Hi, Wes. Uh, so WordPress.tv, it has uh, talks from the WordCamps. Uh, yes. Is that right? So, uh, is the plan to maintain it on WordPress.tv or will those also be, you know, kind of published on YouTube or uh, or any kind of work being done so that we can, uh, you know, do some advanced filtering and uh, searching on WordPress.tv? Uh, yeah, so um, since the beginning, all our content goes to WordPress.tv. So that's where we upload our content. So if you go on WordPress.tv now, you, you will find all of our content. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, we can see WordPress, I mean, WordCamp content and stuff on WordPress.tv, but also all our content. But it's set up now in a way that as soon as I upload a video to WordPress.tv, it just automatically goes to, to YouTube and then I publish from there. Yeah, so um, was the second part of your question, are we going to try and... So, uh, help folks to I, search I, in WordPress.tv. Yeah, so I haven't, uh, you know, honestly, I haven't been on WordPress.tv in a long time, but, uh, you know, uh, I found some issues in, you know, filtering or searching my own, you know, WordCamp video in the yeah. past. Yeah. Uh, so let's say if I want some of my team members to go on WordPress.tv and filter by topics, you know, uh, let's say REST API. Yeah. Uh, is, is that... Uh, possible right yes, now? Yes, that is possible right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. But yeah, I also wanted to say, um, Pooja was a team rep for the tra training team, so yeah, it's cool that she can, can introduce me today. Um, but yeah, it's been wonderful working with, with her as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any more question here? Yeah, so all I can say yes. is watch the space. Do you have any questions? I think that was a yawn. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> you almost got yourself in trouble there. <laughs> so thank well, you for thank the informative you. session. And we have learned a lot from the from you as well. And we have a token of appreciation for you. Thank Please you, Pooja. Allow me to give. Ah. <laughs> I can give you a hug. Thanks, everyone. Now it's a lunch break time. So if you are feeling hungry, must be feeling hungry. 
go to floor third and take your meal enjoy we will be resuming after lunch here thank you